previously on NTV. Checkpoint Security Gateways. Hello and welcome to this month's edition of NTV. My name is Sean Doggett, one of the security engineers here at Nebulous. In this month's edition, we're going to be talking about how we can improve F5 load balance reselection through the use of iRules. Hope you enjoy. Okay guys, to kick things off, I'm just going to take you through what we're going to cover in this video. Firstly, I'll take you through the network architecture. Uh, following that, I will uh, demonstrate the deployment of a web virtual server. Um, following that, then I'll be able to demonstrate the basic health monitoring um, that comes from the uh, default IAP for HTTP servers. Following that, then I will look at showing you how to enhance the end user experience with iRules. So if one of the pool members was to drop, um, we're going to use an iRule to automatically reselect a pool member using the round robin algorithm. And then following that, I will demonstrate how we've improved that. So here we go, this is our network. Um, you can see as it consists of two F5 big IPs um, that are in the HA pair. We're going to have one in primary, that will be our active uh, big IP. Um, that's going to consist of two self IPs either side of the network. Um, as, as we can see in the WAN side of the network, we're going to have the address 192.168.1.100 in a slash 24. And in the LAN side, we're going to have a 10.0.0.100 and that's also in a slash 24 as well. Um, beyond that, we're going to have a virtual server um, which will represent these two pool members down at the bottom of the screen here. Um, both these pool members will be sat on 10.0.0.50 and 51 and they will be represented by 192.168.1.50 at the WAN side. So any connections that come through will be load balanced through to each of the pool members and we're going to use a least connected um, algorithm for that. In the event of a failover, you'll see that the uh, floating IPs will f uh, move across over to the standby member. So as we can see now, we've got a .100 and .50 on the WAN side on LTM2, and we've got a .100 on the uh, LAN side um, as well. And traffic should then be redistributed across to the members accordingly. Okay guys, diving straight in, we can see that we're currently on the online active big IP and it's currently in an in-sync status. Um, just behind here we can see that the online standby device is there and is currently in sync as well, so we can see that our HA is up and running. Uh, back to the online active, we can see that I've gone into iApps, selected application services and I've created a new www uh, iApp, here's the name here and we're using the F5 HTTP template. Um, I've actually gone down and I've selected the advanced configuration options uh, to give us a bit more control over what we want to do here. Um, we've specified that the clients will be connecting um, over the wide area network, so on the WAN side of the big IP, and they'll be connecting via the external VLAN, uh, and also the big IP virtual server IP and the web servers are on different subnets. Um, we don't want to uh, do any sort of SSL encryption, it's all going to be plain text HTTP and then we're going to be using the 192.168.1.50 address on the WAN side to connect uh, to those backend servers and then we can see that down here we've got the uh, pool members configured ready to go so 10.0.0.50 and 10.0.0.51 and we're going to be connecting to those on 8080 uh, moving down, we're not going to use any caching because we don't want to um, hamper the results of this video. Going further down, um, we have the ability to actually specify a, an eye rule. Um, we can see that there's one currently here, but we'll be using that later on. Um, and also, we've been, we're going to use the uh, application um, health monitor, uh, the HTTP default one. So we can click finish here. Now that's completed, we can see all the elements have been pre-configured for us thanks uh, to the IAP template. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync that uh, to make sure that we've got the same configuration on both big IPs. As you can see here, LTM1, which is our online active appliance, um, has changes pending. So if we select that, we can sync this device to the HA group, um, which is currently selected, and you just need to select sync. Fantastic, there we go, so both of them are in sync. If we just drop over to the big IP uh, LTM2, 
you can see that that's in sync now as well. And if we just drop into iApps here, we should be able to see that our www iApp has actually been uh, replicated across this device, which it has. So um, we should have a, a working virtual server. So let's try and navigate to it. And 192.168.1.50. So we've managed to reach uh, server 2 in this instance, that the F5 has load balanced us using the least connection method to get through to this particular server. Um, and we currently have uh, connection persistence uh, enabled on this iApp as well, which means that we will continue to hit this uh, web server until, until either the health monitor uh, marks server 2 down, um, or if we connect from a different machine, Okay, so what I want to demonstrate here now is what happens when the pool member drops. So currently we're connecting into Ubuntu Services 02, which has my Apache Tomcat uh, web server running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this uh, server to drop the connection out. And then what I want to do then is quickly go back to my web browser and try and re-establish the connection to that server. And what we have currently is a connection persistence um, which directs us directly to this server. And let's see what happens. So that's stopped, and we should press enter on that. And what we're going to see here now is this timeout. Okay, so now we've seen that that's timed out. If we were to uh, re establish the connection to the virtual server again, we should expect to uh, be load balanced to the uh, one remaining member that's in that pool. And there we go, we've reached server 1 in this instance. That's because the HTTP monitor has now marked server 2 down, whereas before we, we didn't reach the timeout interval. Um, so therefore, uh, the F5 thought that that virtual server was still up and doesn't mark it down until it reaches its timeout interval. Okay, so what we've demonstrated thus far is uh, F5's sort of inability to uh, dynamically reselect a, a pool member when you use just the basic settings uh, for an F5 uh, HTTP IAP. And I just wanted to show you the, the uh, default settings of the HTTP monitor itself. As we can see here that we've got an interval of 5 seconds. Now the interval is the uh, amount of seconds it takes before the next health check is sent out. Following that we also have the timeout um, which is set to 16 seconds. A timeout is how long the F5 will wait before marking a pool member down. Uh, and the, uh, the, the recommended time settings for the interval and the timeout is that it's n times 3 plus 1. So n being the interval of 5 seconds times 3 which would be 15 plus 1 which is 16. So moving on from this, what I want to demonstrate is how we can look at uh, improving the load balancer's reselection. So we don't have to press the enter key again in the address bar using an I rule to automatically reselect a pool member when, a, when it detects that a pool member has gone down. So to do this, I've already pre-populated an I rule on the box. So we can go there by selecting I rules and I rule list. And I've created an I rule called LB reselect, so that's load balance reselect. Okay, so before taking you through this I rule, I just wanted to show you this awesome website, um, which is actually provided by F5 called Dev Central. Um, on Dev Central, you can find absolutely everything you need uh, with regards to I rules. If you search up in here uh, for I rules, we've got an I rules wiki uh, just here, and it will take you through absolutely, absolutely everything that you need to know. So things such as events, the operators and everything else that you might need. Um, all you have to do is uh, go, go on to uh, dev, devcentral.f5.com and create yourself an account. So just closing that down and going back to our I rule. I just want to take you through um, exactly what's going on in this I rule and how it's going to help us. So what we're looking to do is detect when low balancing has failed. So low balancing fail, failing is basically um, we're not getting any response back from, from that pool member. So what we're looking to do is catch when load balance is down. We're going to set the the um, load balancing mode from least connected in this one particular instance, and we're going to set it to RR, which stands for round robin. So what it will do is select the next available member on a completely random basis, and um, we're going to set persist to none, 
Um, that way we're removing the persistence record that we have for ourselves, which keeps sending us to that member that's currently down. And then we're going to reselect um, a new or a new load balance um, pool member. So I just wanted to take you through that. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign that I rule to our virtual server. I'm going to select our I app. I'm going to select reconfigure. And then I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom of this I app and select the I rule, which we didn't select previously. And I'm going to click finished. Okay, so before proceeding again, I'm going to uh, sync our changes to our secondary member. Which has succeeded lovely. And as we can see up here, we can see that we're back in sync again. Just moving back over to our secondary member, we can see that that's also in sync as well. So currently, we should uh, still only have one pool member up. We can verify that actually by going into local traffic, going into our pools, selecting the pool member, www pool. As you can see, the pool is actually available because there is available members within that pool. But if we go and have a look at those members, we can see that one of our pool members is down, which is server two. Let's just double check that our virtual server is still up and running. We go to 192.168.1.50 and we're still reaching server one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, bring back up server two and then um, make sure that we're still reaching server one. And then after that, I'm going to down server one, come back and try and hit the VIP again and see whether we actually get automatically load balanced back to server two without having to press enter again on the address bar or refresh the page. Okay, so here we can see that our Ubuntu services OS two is still paused. Um, and we can see that Ubuntu Services OS is still up and running, which is where Server 1 is. So I'm going to resume this virtual machine. And there we go, services have been restored. Now what we want to check is that we're still reaching Server 1. So we can do that by hitting uh, 192.168.1.50 again. And as we can see, that it keeps uh, redirecting us to the same server because of our uh, connection persistence. So what we want to demonstrate now is if we down server one, that we get automatically load balanced back to server two without any user interference at all. So to do so, I'm going to bring up our virtual servers again. As we can see, both services are, are up and running. So what we want to do, because we're hitting server one, is down this server, and then we're going to go back to our browser and quickly um, try and re-establish a connection to uh, the virtual server. And hopefully what we expect to see is that the big IP will automatically load balance us to Ubuntu server OS2. And we'll see that reflected in the page that's delivered. And there we have it. We've reached server two without having to resubmit the page or click refresh at all. I hope uh, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need to contact a member of our team or need any more information, please please click on the end. Please click on the end. Please click on the end.